Hello, folks. Uh, welcome. My name is Akash, and I am presenting the report by Uber on building out the real-time data infrastructure. Uh, so Uber is a pretty big business. Everyone knows about them, and their business is pretty uh, real-time in nature. They collect petabytes of data from their end users, and uh, then they need to process it in seconds. Uh, to make decisions on their business use cases um, concerning customer incentives, fraud detection, et cetera. So they talk about dynamic search pricing a lot uh, with respect to this paper. Uh, um, the additional complexity to the system that they built here was added by, by their different user categories. Like they had all kinds of people using the system, engineers, data scientists, executives, operation personnel. So they talk about three fundamental challenges that they faced. Uh, they, they wanted to solve for themselves, which was scaling data, like handling data volume increase while maintaining the business SLAs around data freshness, end-to-end um, -end latency and availability. Uh, scaling use cases, they have different business verticals and each of the business verticals has a different use case uh, with varying requirements, uh, often competing in nature, uh, like dynamic pricing is a, is a large workflow and it needs real-time data and availability is what it prioritizes. Uh, similarly, business metrics around orders and sales uh, prioritize consistency, like their financial metrics. So different systems, different business verticals. Uh, and the third thing is scaling of users. Uh, like I talked about, they have users with diverse backgrounds. They all fall on a big spectrum of technical skills. So the problem statement that they had was to build a unified platform, uh, which has some standard abstractions um, that can work for varied use cases and users at scale. Um, a key decision they made here was to adopt open source solutions uh, for their development velocity, um, cost effectiveness, and in general, they wanted to harness the power of the cloud. Um, so the diagram that we see here is a high level flow of data uh, inside Uber's infrastructure. So we have all of this uh, analytical data uh, being picked up by mobile app events, backend events, all of these events, they they go as raw data streams to their data infra where it is picked up by batch processing systems and ingested in their data warehouse. But there's also this real-time data infra component, uh, which is which continuously processes data to power the use cases like dynamic pricing, dashboards, alerts, machine learning stuff, uh, etc. So this paper specifically focuses around this uh, real-time component for them. Uh, so when building out the system, they, 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 they derive their requirements from all of their use cases. So like consistency, which was required by their financial dashboards, availability, uh, uh, which was important to dynamic pricing, uh, dynamic pricing, also has uh, requires data freshness at seconds level. Um, uh, security incidents require data freshness at uh, seconds level. Query latency uh, spans from a few milliseconds to maybe a minute for uh, 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 dashboards in their uh, Uber Eats system. Um, the system also has to, all right, hello. Is everyone able to see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me start again. I'm so sorry. Something happened in my system. Yeah, so I was at requirements of the system. Uh, and I was at scalability. So uh, the system has to scale with ever-growing data while maintaining the cost. Like the cost has to be uh, as low as possible since Uber is a low margin business. And then there's flexibility. 
as well. So I just thought about the cap theorem when going through all of these requirements of the system. I think they have a section to talk about it as well. Uh, this is the high level diagram of the uh, analytic system. And these are all the components. Uh, the storage layer provides an interface for layers all over it. And uh, it has read after write consistency guarantee. It is optimized for high write rate. Similarly, there's streams, uh, this compute, there's overlap for analytical queries, SQL for users and, and a programmable API. And all, all of the system powers these use cases, the dashboards, uh, machine learning systems, et cetera. Um, in terms of how, what they use for each of these systems, uh, not surprisingly, they, they use Kafka for their streaming storage. Um, they have one of the largest deployments of Kafka around and they have customized Kafka uh, to add cluster federation, wherein the users view a logical cluster. They don't know that there are multiple clusters running behind the system and uh, they don't know where where the topic that they're reading from or uh, writing to actually resides. They built a dead letter queue as well and a consumer proxy and cross cluster replication tool. Uh, and we'll see why they built the cross cluster replication tool uh, in the later parts of this presentation. So via Kafka, everything goes to HDFS for batch processing and it goes to Flink for stream processing. Uh, they adopted Flink because it had built-in state management and checkpointing for failure recovery. Yeah, Flink also handles back pressure quite uh, efficiently when faced with Kafka input lag. Uh, and I can attest to that. Uh, and it has a large and active open source community. Um, Uber also contributed something like Flink SQL uh, on to Flink system and internally they have built a unified Flink platform to power their various business use cases. Then they have Apache Pino uh, for their uh, OLAP needs and uh, Pino employs the Lambda architecture uh, which combines real-time data with historical data to, to give you uh, analytical capabilities over that. And uh, to P Pino also Uber contributed like a scalable absurd support. They had use cases like they had to correct a ride fare, they had to update a delivery status in, uh, within a fraction of seconds. Um, all, all of the system reads data in the Avro format and uh, HDFS process everything as raw logs. Um, then for uh, they have Presto, which uh, which is for SQL query. Um, so next, they talk about the use cases and what those use cases use in the components that are here. So each year, from the start of the presentation, they they have many use cases to cater to. So their dynamic search uses stream component, the compute component, and the API. Restaurant manager for Uber Eats uses SQL, OLAP, compute stream storage, everything similarly with real time prediction monitoring. And EDOPS just uses SQL OLAP. So uh, this was just oh, what what part of the business use case, what uh, which component does it use? Uh, this was the interesting part of the paper for me. Uh, where how, how do they ensure business uh, resilience? Like, uh, what is their multi-region strategy? Um, so all of their uh, services are deployed in geo-distributed data centers and uh, uh, foundation of all of their multi-region uh, architecture is, uh, is their multi-region Kafka setup. So like I said, they had contributed uh, cross region uh, cluster coordinator uh, called U replicator. Uh, they have contributed, no, they have built this on top of their Kafka setup. Uh, and how, how does it help them? Uh, like uh, this, uh, 
the diagram on the slide is uh, actually for uh, the dynamic pricing service, uh, which favors availability. So all of the trip events are sent to Kafka clusters uh, in, in a particular region. And then they are, they are aggregated into this aggregated Kafka uh, uh, for a global view all across. Uh, and then within each region, they have a flink job uh, running, which then uh, contacts uh, an update service. Uh, and the update service stores all of the data in, in a KV store, which is queried by uh, the consumers. So let's say if one of the region goes down, uh, then the search pricing would fall over to another region. And uh, here, if you notice, the Flink job is, is not uh, replicated. O only the Kafka clusters are connected. Uh, so this is because the computation of Flink is, is too large. And they say that uh, synchronously replication, uh, synchronous replication between regions uh, is, is a bit costly. So they don't do that. Uh, they rely on the input to the segregated Kafka is, is the same across all the regions. So the output state that comes out of him, uh, uh, converges for them. So if this service goes down, this region is uh, designated as primary and uh, in spring state converges, whatever data is available uh, is the same uh, for the search consumers. Uh, next, they talk about their active passive uh, mode, which is for consistency, where only one consumer is uh, uh, is allowed to consume from the aggregate Kafka clusters, um, in, and uh, a region is designated as primary region. So whenever some a uh, disaster happens, the service fails over to another region and just resumes its consumption process. So uh, with respect to Kafka, this gets a bit tricky uh, because uh, the offset management uh, is a challenge. Um, so uh, like when this consumer starts up, it has to decide whether to resume from the latest message from that particular uh, Kafka topic or from, uh, from the initial message. So to overcome this challenge, uh, Uber developed their own offset management uh, solution. And uh, the replicator service periodically checkpoints. A replicator is their Kafka replicator. So it periodically checkpoints uh, the offset from a source to a destination. And uh, an offset job periodically syncs uh, offset uh, between the two uh, regions. So uh, whenever the failover happens, the consumer can just pick up uh, the offset from the offset manager and resume the consumption. Uh, although I'm not sure how well this would work in practice, uh, I guess it is uh, working for them. Um, Uber learned, uh, there's a Uber learned a lot of lessons while building the system. So they really liked the open source adoption bit. Uh, it allowed uh, quick iteration and uh, reduced their time to market. However, they had to adapt these open source systems to their needs since they are built for specific purpose. Um, they could enable rapid system development and evolution. Uh, via standardized interfaces between the services and introducing thin clients. So if you have to talk to Kafka, you don't directly talk to Kafka. There's a Kafka client, a Kafka REST API client uh, that you talk to and not actually Kafka. And they consolidated languages across the team. So they have Java and Gola and they have Presto SQL for the SQL needs. They also invested a lot uh to enable ease of operation and monitoring so they invested into automation and declarative frameworks to orchestrate the system deployments because hardware needs typically outpace the software or, or the engineer needs 
And for each of those deployments, they had automated dashboards, alerts for each use case pertaining to Kafka. Uh, so whoever is the service owner, if they are using the system, they would have these uh, dashboards and alerts already set up for them. Uh, they also invested a lot into uh, user onboarding and debugging. So they built a self-serve system that automates the entire user onboarding, failure handling and triaging for users. Uh, I also watched a video where the person who was involved in building this uh, said that Uber had different teams for, uh, like there was a hive, uh, hive team, there was a tester team uh, and a Pino team was developed. So which drove all of this. So most of their operations are centered on Pino, uh, Pache Pino that we saw here. So this was a four person team uh, and uh, everyone else just built connectors on top of Pino uh, for, for the analytical use cases to happen. And I guess that is it. Um, thank you so much.